Hi Ashley, hope you are doing hey. good. Hey. <laughs> and welcome to another episode of Insta Travel Style podcast series. And in this podcast series, I'm reaching out to the, all the bloggers, content creators, digital nomads, who are doing a very good job in their travel domain, and what are they doing right now in the COVID period. I'm just learning from them and sharing their experiences, beautiful experiences they have done so far. So it would be good opportunity to cover Ashley today from Wisconsin. Ashley, glad to have you on our podcast. Thank you for having me. So I will just start with some beautiful introduction with Ashley. Ashley is a small town girl from Wisconsin, and she has a dream to travel from island to island. And uh, apart from that, she is a solo female travel blogger, uh, scuba diver. She knows scuba diving as well. She is a content creator, lifestyle blogger, and covering various topics as well. And successfully running a travel YouTube channel as well. and where she has around uh, around 250 plus subscriber as of now so she is into a beginner stage right now so hope our video gets viral and she got a lot of <laughs> a lot of subscriber out of after with this video so let's see how this yes. interview goes on <laughs> <laughs> so actually if you can uh, share a few of about few things about you from how did you started and how you come into this industry like travel blogging youtuber youtubing and content creation oh man i don't really even know how it got started i feel like it's just been years and years of watching other people do this and i didn't really get to travel internationally a lot when i was a kid my dad would always take me on like short trips camping a lot of motorcycle trips So there was always a lot of like moving around, exploring, doing stuff like that. My dad traveled a lot like his whole life um just around the United States, visiting the parks, stuff like that. And I th- I was about 25 years old when my dad passed away. So I think that was really the biggest push for me to be like, okay, mm-hmm. I need to start doing the things that I want to do before I die. <laughs> Yeah. Um really I mean my dad passed away at 57 so it was really young but he lived a crazy full life okay. and he also loves traveling Yes oh my god yeah he was always kind of on the go whenever he could okay. I feel like he literally just worked to save money to take motorcycle trips <laughs> <laughs> So he loves road trips um, Yes lots of road trips um so yeah i think that was kind of the biggest push for me was you know when he passed away and then just watching so many other people do this like people yeah. are making real livings mm-hmm. traveling creating right. content absolutely um and i just kind of worked tirelessly for like 3 years saving as much money as i could yeah. still trying to take as many trips as i could within my budget Yeah. Um just to kind of get the feel like is this something that I really want to do mm-hmm. or not um starting all the social media building that up over the years Yeah. Um yeah, we'll see. I'm still very much in the beginner stage, so yeah. But your Instagram just kind of see what really happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. So what are you doing these days like during corona period, during lockdown in Wisconsin? So how are you spending these days are you learning any kind of new tool any platform you're exploring right now Oh yeah I mean at first in the beginning of all of this lockdown you know it was kind of like ah it'll be over in a couple of weeks I'll be back <laughs> to French Polynesia this will be good um and then after like a month you're kind of like wait this isn't like Makes nothing's sense. happening <laughs> I'm still here Yeah. Um there was just so much uncertainty so I feel like maybe from like 4 to 7 weeks it was kind of just a lot of anxiety feeling really sad that I couldn't travel mm-hmm. feeling sad and upset that I was sad about my own problems when there were so many people that had it worse. Yeah. Um true. and then kind of from that like 7 week part till now I was just like you know what I'm here, I'm home. I'm lucky enough to have a home. 
Yeah. I have, you know, people around me that love and care about me. I'm just going to take this as an actual opportunity yeah. and learn as much as possible. So I've been taking like sunset photos every other night. I use my camera every single day. So I have so much like great equipment. I have a nice camera. I have a drone, a GoPro, yeah, yeah, right. but I never fully got to actually sit down take the time to learn how to use them okay You're i mean i <laughs> yes I, I was always learning on the go and it's yeah. just not effective mm -hmm. um i mean i literally quit my job or resigned my position my last day was a friday and i was boarding a plane to tahiti on monday okay so I, there was and i was working 80 to 100 hours a week so oh. Amazing. It wasn't like I could take a day off and go hiking and sit and mess around with my camera for hours on end. Okay. So it's been incredible just sitting here learning my own camera. Mm -hmm. I took a drone course by Alex Harris that was incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have so much <laughs> drone footage from Bermuda mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. that I was trying to edit on my own using Adobe Premiere prior to taking this course and it was like i was like pulling my hair out cussing yeah, at your my computer drone videos on youtube as well they're like simply oh. you some <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> oh it is like 1000 percent all to that drone class that i took from alex harris because okay. prior to i was just like pulling my hair out, cussing at Adobe Premiere, like, why can't I get this video to like flip or reverse? Like I couldn't figure out anything. It was like okay. endless hours of searching on YouTube, trying to figure out how to <laughs> use it. And it was so frustrating. So we are making w very good progress on that. Um, good. Good to hear yes. That. So I'm trying to edit all my past footage. Mm -hmm. that I've taken on trips. So it's all a really good learning experience. The footage isn't 100% the best, but, yeah, but on my next trip, mm -hmm. I know how to improve it. So mm -hmm. that's the most important part. Yeah, like we are um, learning day by day. We are in yes. area of improvements. There's so much to learn. It's mm -hmm. never ending. Um, no. right. I'm always working on my website, trying to create content for that. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that I got to create is like a, it's like a little online shop called the beautiful traveler okay. that is very, very much in its infancy stage. Um, okay, okay. There's a lot yeah. of work to be done for that. Mm -hmm. um, so you're doing these kind of jobs absolutely with yourself only or you are hiring some freelancers as well? Just myself. Just yourself. Okay. Yeah. Maybe one day some freelancing, since I did some of the YouTube videos for the drone footage, I have had a couple of my dedicated followers message me and they're like, hey, how, would you, how much would you charge to edit some footage for me? Oh. <laughs> like, well, I mean, I guess it depends on the length of the video you want, but yeah, right, right. yeah it was kind of like high compliments yeah. for that when somebody else is asking you to edit yeah, their I footage. Think, like, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely not professional, but I'm getting there. You're doing a decent job. Yeah. Quite decent. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It is a lot of work. <laughs> it's yeah. like sitting at a computer editing for the same video part, yeah. over and over. <laughs> yeah. For like you have to redo some action. Three minute video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three minutes yeah. video sometimes takes around 100 plus hours. Yes. We what we have to achieve from oh, that. Thing. It really is. You know, it's like, I try so much to edit the video to be, you know, at least 70% in tune with the audio. So it's like, you better pick a good song that you can listen to for at least 20 hours. Like, dun -dun 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 -dun. like it's just <laughs> over and over. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> so let's start with the next question. Like, why have you quitted your corporate health career? Like you are successful there as well and you have like the transition into a travel domain now oh man so you know corporate healthcare is pretty stressful i think mm -hmm. i had a really good position that 
you know, there was quite a bit of stress. It wasn't so much like, oh, I hate this job, like, yeah. screw this place type of thing. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a combination of everything. Um, I was approaching the age of 30, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like, you know, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I don't make this happen now, I'm not going to make it happen. So, you have to make I mean, I in your life. <laughs> yeah, it was really kind of strange, honestly. For about a year, I talked about it like, yep, I'm quitting my job. Like, I'm quitting my job. <laughs> I'm going, I'm traveling, I'm out of here. Yeah. See you guys later. Um, and then maybe it's like three weeks. So mm -hmm. I can't just quit like a corporate position. I had to um, give like a formal notice. notice and I actually, yeah, I actually gave three weeks notice. Um, and like that was one of the most nerve wracking phone calls to make to my director. Like, Hey, so by the way, like it was, I was totally blown away. Like the emotional response that I had, cause I was so excited and so confident, like, yep, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. And then when it came down to like, yeah, I actually am leaving. It was, very emotional it was yeah so it was you have almost spent around like, like five to six years in healthcare or more than that um i have worked in healthcare for like nine or ten years nine or ten. yeah so working early i guess 20 months yeah or oh yeah no i was working way before that <laughs> just <laughs> not in healthcare <laughs> okay really hard working yeah yeah, I think I've had a job since I was like 14 or awesome. maybe 12. 12, okay. I used to clear dishes at the restaurant up at the road. So, okay, okay. Yeah. Great progress. It's very yeah. exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right, right. And right now you have like wearing multiple hats, like scuba diving, travel content creation, and photography. Like, how do you manage these things at a go? I have. <laughs> I have no clue. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I like sit down and I'm like, how am I doing all this? I just, mm -hmm. and why are you doing all this? Why can't you just pick one lane and stay in that lane? But yeah. I mean, I just have so many different things that I love and I care about. Okay. Thankfully, you know, I don't live near an ocean, so I can't be scuba diving every day. Otherwise I definitely would be. Um, so it is a little bit challenging. You have uh, some? So I actually got certified or I did my pool and classroom at a little shop in Illinois about an hour from my house. And then my friend Megan and I flew out to California and we did our open water dives in San Diego and it was freezing, like the worst conditions you could dive in so bad that they gave us pre-dives on our next return like they felt that bad that the conditions were super terrible <laughs> so but every dive has been better than that so yeah. it's just getting better and better okay <laughs> so are you are you a beach person or a mountain person beach bum to beach. my core <laughs> But why? <laughs> Any love for the beaches or like you love staying near the beaches? Oh, yeah. I could just probably live on a beach house and be fine. Okay. Awesome. Great. great. And I've uh, read in your blog as well about the how to book cheap flights. Can you share, oh, yes. some, can you share some thoughts around like how to my audiences, to my subscribers, like how they can go ahead with the like booking of cheap flights? Okay. So... If you have it available to you, mm -hmm. Google Flights, yeah. um, I know that's not available in every country. So mm -hmm. Google Flights is one of the best. That's what I go to first. Um, anytime you can select multiple airports from where you're departing or where you're arriving or one airport. And then you just click on the calendar 
-hmm. and all the dates will pop up with all the prices and you can see which one's the lowest. Mm -hmm. I select, so like, for example, I'm going to Bermuda. So mm -hmm. I'll put in Milwaukee slash Chicago because those are my two closest airports. And then I'll put Bermuda as my destination mm -hmm. and I won't pick any dates. I'll click on the calendar. It'll show me the cheapest dates. I'll select the dates. I'll see who, like the flight times, stuff like that. Yeah. And then I will actually go to momondo.com. It's okay. M O M O and do.com mm -hmm. i'll put in those cheapest dates and then search it in mamondo because they bring up um everything so google flights only searches airlines okay. and then mamondo searches expedia trip all of that stuff mm -hmm. all of like the package things that you can buy mm -hmm. orbits whatever um i don't typically book anything third party it's not something i do but i know other people do it it's just not covered if there's some weird cancellation i always try to book directly with the airline but when you search through with momondo it'll give you the cheapest, cheapest ones yeah okay flight times might be a little long but <laughs> you can save a couple hundred bucks easily oh. i mean that's the biggest thing though when it comes to traveling on a budget or traveling and trying to do it cheap is flexibility is key. Yeah. Um which makes it so tough for a lot of people. You know, it's designed that way so that you know they make more money, of course, they're in business. Yeah. But it sucks for the average working person that can't be like, yeah, I can fly out Monday morning or you know, the cheapest day of the week or a yeah. non-holiday. Especially mm -hmm. folks with kids, yeah, you know, yeah. they got to travel around their kids' schedules, spring break, mm -hmm. holidays. That's kind of what they have. Summertime, I mean, prices triple during that time. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's really crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can save a lot of money. You just got to use the internet, you know, take out your cell phone, two thumbs, <laughs> information <laughs> at your fingertips, literally. Okay. And uh, like, what are your social media goals for this year? Like, do you have any numbers in your mind? Like you have your <laughs> subscriber count from this to this on Facebook? Um, on the only goal I really have is mm -hmm. for YouTube. Definitely. I want to hit 1000 subscribers. So if you're watching this, go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. <laughs> okay, um, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Social media, other ones, Facebook, Instagram. I don't really set goals for that. Mm -hmm. okay. I just kind of try to let it happen and just slowly grow. It would be nice to grow at a faster pace, but it's mm -hmm. just not realistic. Yeah. Facebook and Instagram algorithms are trash. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> like four week or four months, they come. It's just them. not. It's just not as easy as it used to be. I mean, I'm one of the originals that jumped on the Instagram bandwagon. And I mean, I went from zero to like 7,000 followers with no effort. And, you know, to hit that 10,000 mark was like, Jesus, I'm having to put in a lot of work here. And now I'm like, I spend an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, and an hour at night. Like, it, it's a... It's yeah. a job. Yeah. <laughs> the kids. It, it's a lot of work. Stressful as well. Like quite hectic for you, like to communicate with your followers on Instagram, create stories around. So do you feel sometimes stressful or like hectic job? No, not really. Mm -hmm. Not when I'm home. I mean, this is just my life, so I'm just sharing that. Yeah. Um, I actually don't find it all that much work to like comment or engage with people i respond to every single message that people send to me yeah. it's not annoying or work to me um mm -hmm. i like engaging with my people i've met so many cool people around the world yeah i've I learned see. from them like it's mm -hmm. so cool um getting random messages from people you know like that you've inspired is really like okay cool i'm doing what i am meant to be doing right now and this is a good path for me 
the stressful part is really just like creating the content to upload for my feed or you know something like that I feel like I stress too much about like how I shouldn't upload this photo it doesn't really go with what's on my feed right now and that is just so stupid that I stress over that um but the actual engagement Mm -hmm. stories that's easy that's that's not a bother to me (laughs) and do you do you follow any travel content creator or influencer right now which you get inspired from I do. I follow a couple of them. Um, I try not to actually follow a lot um, I try not to actually take in everything that they're doing because I don't want like to replicate something that somebody else is doing. doing yeah. I don't know if that makes much sense. Like I I don't want to subconsciously be doing something that someone else is doing if that makes yeah. any sense <laughs> yeah absolutely we have to show our unique usps like what we are yeah at. we don't have to follow um, anyone yeah i don't want other people to be like oh it, this girl is just doing the same thing that this girl is doing type of thing um but i do follow a couple um Alyssa um from my life to travel movie is kind of her mm-hmm. um motto or whatever um i follow her i've been following her for years um i love her style she just keeps it real she Mm -hmm. is you know she doesn't hide her feelings about anything she's Mm -hmm. her captions and stuff that she's posting are always full of super useful information it's not just like oh here's a beautiful beach with a girl in a swimsuit there's real information in there um Yes. I think that's what people, you know, from 20 to over 50 are looking for real information. People yeah. love to learn. Mm-hmm. Right. They, you know, I, there's so many creators out there that have really put a bad mark on the board for a lot of other folks, I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Got it. And what, yeah, the bl- like, yeah, yeah. Go on, please go on. Um, and the blonde abroad is another one that I follow. Okay. Um, she is one that I kind of really look up to more for like, mm-hmm. she has really scaled her travels into mm-hmm. a really successful business model. Okay. And I think for long term goals, mm-hmm. that's definitely something that I would like to aspire, maybe just emulate a little bit of what she's doing. Yeah. Because ideally at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. I would like to make some money off of what I'm doing eventually. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Can't survive on savings forever. (laughs) Okay. So are you also thinking of creating a course like on Pinterest marketing or maybe on uh, uh, diving, Mm -hmm. like any course you have in my, in your mind right now? For future? Um, we'll see. I am on Pinterest doing a little bit with that. I really should do more, but yeah. I feel like I'm doing a thousand things every day. Yeah. I mean, there's there's not a single day where I'm like, hey, I'm just going to do nothing all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, it just doesn't even happen. I'm doing yeah. stuff before I even get out of bed. So, yeah, right. We'll see. I really would like to mm-hmm. expand in every area. It's just it's like, like gradually the time. Will... Yeah. Right. yeah. We'll see. I am on Pinterest. I do try to do a little bit with that at least three days a week. So mm-hmm. Yeah, Pinterest is a really great source <laughs> for organic traffic. It yeah. is. Mm-hmm. It really, really is. Um actually back in April. I was like, okay, I'm going to do a challenge. I'm challenging myself to 15 days of Pinterest every single day. And I hit like 170,000 viewers in that 15 days. And I was like, wow, this is really good. Yeah. I'm like really impressed. I had no idea that Pinterest was this strong. So yeah, yeah, right. I need to really Up stay consistent. 
Yes, I do. But it is so time consuming. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that there's a bunch of tools out there. Yeah, like Tailwind. Ta- Tailwind. Yeah. yeah, all of those. But mm-hmm. I saw a huge drop when I started using Tailwind. I mean, the algorithm knows that you're not posting mm-hmm. organically. So mm-hmm. yeah, I got the most out of manually posting. And I really should add that to my morning routine, like mm-hmm. create some pins at night yeah, before I go to bed. Five to six and, pins in the morning and five to six yeah, in the bed time. Yeah, I really should. It is very time consuming, but I do have a really great app that I use to create the images for Pinterest. It's just yeah. taking yeah. the time to do it. I know the <laughs> app name. Um, it's called Word Swag. Word Swag. Um, okay. Yeah, it's super great. Mm-hmm. Fun fonts. Um, you do. I. I actually don't know if there's a free version of it. I it's I pay five dollars a month for it. Yeah, not a big. Deal. Um. Yeah. yeah, I know people are like, nope, I want a free app. Um, <laughs> I do. I'm not sure if they have a free version or not. I know you can do like a 30 day free trial and see if you like it, but. Okay. I use it a lot. I use it in my Instagram stories, mm-hmm. kind of a little bit of everything. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So like, uh, how do you plan your trips? Like, do you set up <laughs> particular itinerary for yourself? Anything specific you do in packaging? <laughs> like what sort of traveler you are like when you go for oh. traveling? You explore local things, <laughs> you explore the luxurious things. Oh yeah. So when it comes to planning, an actual trip i have like two modes it's like all or nothing there's no in between i'm either like <laughs> super ocd i have an excel spreadsheet like the okay. whole nine mm-hmm. or i'm just like yeah i'm going here i have literally no clue what i'm going to do i'm just going to like you know google maps and see what's around me and go from there okay. um i mean i typically am looking for a beach of course mm-hmm. so i mean but i'm pretty much up for anything mm-hmm. swimming in caves okay. waterfalls hiking beaches scuba diving anything really okay. except i don't like eels so if there's eels in the water i'm not not into that mm-hmm. um but yeah that's kind of really it that's okay. the only thing i don't like <laughs> Okay, okay. And uh, like, do you have any suggestion for the new bloggers or content creators who want to pursue a career in travel blogging and vlogging? Oh, well, make sure it's something you really like to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's kind of it. If it's something you really want to do, just go for it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Mm-hmm. Time is going to pass by no matter what. So yeah. you might as well spend it doing what you really want to do. I mean, money is going to be the biggest thing always. So, you know, do what you have to do to get to where you want to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm solely surviving off of my savings, which is dwindling down. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, but I didn't just like wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm going to quit my job tomorrow. I'm out of here. And I had no plan. I worked two to three jobs for three years. I mean, 80 to a hundred hours a week. I've worked my 40 hour job. Mm-hmm. I had a consulting job, which I still hold the position at the consulting firm. Okay. I mean, I would pick up a contract and I would work anywhere from 40 to 60 extra hours a week oh on top God. of my full-time job. Um, and then I would bartend concerts any night of the week, you know, it's three to four hours of work, but mm-hmm. you know, you clear a couple hundred bucks for just a few hours of work and that was plane ticket money, you know? So, mm-hmm. but, um, uh, you know, I worked remotely, so that made a huge difference. You know, mm-hmm. I, I got up in the morning and I walked to my computer at 5 AM mm-hmm. and I stayed at my computer working until 10 11 midnight and then i'd go back to bed you know i just walk to bed there's just 
there was a path in my home from the computer to the bed and that was it. But I did that for three years to save enough money to do what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. but you, you just have to be willing to do well. it. Like you do some yoga or exercise. Event. <laughs> yes oh my home, god like yeah i have to do yoga because otherwise this lifestyle would be like i won't be able to walk <laughs> yeah because right now I mean, early age you are like doing extra initiatives extra working for extra hours but maybe in a longer run your body will not be able yeah to- i mean they say sitting at a computer for eight hours a day is like smoking a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's it's extremely unhealthy. Uh, when I was working those three years, like nonstop at my computer, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I modified my computer desk so many different ways. It was a sit to stand. I actually at one point put my desk up on like little lifts okay. and I put my bike under my computer desk so I could actually like pedal my bike and like type at the same time um (laughs) a yoga ball anything Mm -hmm. like I moved my desk around so many times um just getting up every hour on hour you know many trips to the coffee pot but just Mm -hmm. getting up walking moving doing some stretching Okay. was incredibly important it's so hard to sit like your back just yeah really hurts yeah aches and <laughs> it it really takes a toll on you yeah and so, our eyes also like suffer when we have like straight <laughs> eye to eye contact with our yes yeah. oh my god mm-hmm. i mean there were like so many times i don't know if you get this or other people watching get this but <laughs> i hit a certain point of like staring at a computer screen for so long and my eye just starts like twitching and it just yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's right, so right. frustrating and I'm like okay I just need to go lay down for like mm-hmm. five minutes and take a break um yeah. but you have to really just pay attention to your body and what it's telling you to do um you know I had I was lucky enough to be able to w- do my work from home so mm-hmm. And I have a set schedule. So when I logged on to my computer, that's when I started working. Um, so I haven't used an alarm clock for work in years. So it's very, I'm very, very in tune to what my body is telling me. If I need to sleep until 7 a.m., mm. I'm going to sleep till 7 a.m. If I was up editing videos until 3 o'clock in the morning, I might sleep till 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. That's just the way it is. But I need that sleep to recover and bounce back. You're kind of um, a flexible girl. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My life is very flexible at the moment. Um, but you just kind of have to listen to what your body's telling you. I know everybody doesn't have that flexibility. You know, they got to be there at seven, not 701, not 705. And mm-hmm. yeah. it does make things a lot harder. But you got to do what you got to do, man. Mm. If it's something our, you really want to do, you got to make it happen. Yeah, our life, our goals. Like, if we have certain goals for ourselves, we have to follow them. Yeah. I mean, there's so many people that I know that will message me and they're like, oh, but I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't do this. And it's like, you know, I grew up playing sports and can't was not a word. We were not allowed to say that. No. So it's like <laughs> rule number one, no excuses. Rule number two, play like a champion. Like, okay. that's it. So if you're not willing to do what it takes to get to where you want to go, you're mm-hmm. just going to stay doing the same thing over and over. That's great to it. <laughs> you got to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Nope, you're good. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so what are your, like, biggest learnings so far uh, since you started traveling? Like, any kind of changes you have seen in your body, your thought process? any kind of clarity you got after traveling? Oh, I don't know. There's so much. I feel like every single trip I take, I learn just from the people so much about how they live, their culture, Mm -hmm. food. Food is one of my favorite things to learn about. Um, 
And at the end of the day, I think every single trip, I learn more about myself. And I think that is just so valuable. Mm -hmm. People need to kind of get out there and explore, take a solo trip. Solo Mm -hmm. traveling is incredible. I mean, Mm -hmm. maybe not for everybody, but I think at least everybody should take at least one solo trip in their lifetime. Yeah, we explore the inner self when we travel solo. Yeah. You learn so much about yourself, you know. I think traveling solo is kind of like a sink or swim type of deal. You know, you're either going to make it through or you're not really going to make it through. Either make it or break it. <laughs> yeah. Um it's there it's just so rewarding, you know. Anybody that creates anything, mm-hmm. art, construction, yeah. There is a certain level of self-satisfaction of being able to look back at something and be like, I did that. Yeah. I created that. Mm-hmm. I survived that. I made it through that. Like, mm-hmm. right. you just, there's, can't make anything like that happen and do it for yourself. It's just so great. Um, traveling alone is always challenging, you know, I mean, every time I'm in a new airport, I'm like, fuck, I have to learn this airport. I don't know where to go. I, nothing, I can't read any of the signs. Like, you know, driving in a foreign country is always super fun. I love that. That's one of my favorite parts. Um, but just being able to navigate and through another country, learn about the people, Mm-hmm. If you're social like I am, it makes it a thousand times better. I've never gone anywhere without leaving, making friends. <laughs> so okay. that's really cool. Okay, okay. So do you travel with your dog as well or do you travel? Nah, yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish I could bring him. He would not yeah. be able to fly. Yeah. Um, he has such bad anxiety. He can't be put into like a pet carrier cage thing, Mm -hmm. (sighs) which is such a bummer. I would love to take him on a trip, but he would never make a plane. Maybe one day if I ever have a private plane, I'm just kidding. They're terrible for the environment. (laughs) Private jet, you will fly to your private island there. Maybe. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, that would be awesome. Nah, maybe one day if I own a catamaran or something, he'll be a boat dog. He loves mm-hmm. to swim. He loves to be on a boat or a jet ski. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. Okay, okay. And can you share like a few things about like what are the travel accessories you use while editing videos or when you're traveling outside? Like for the newcomers who want to buy any kind of products related to travel accessories, travel equipment, for shooting videos or like for drone, etc. Oh man. I mean, there's so much. I do have a little, Mm -hmm. I think I actually have a couple uh, blog posts, like the diving equipment that I use and the photography equipment that I use. You just kind of have to find what works for you. Um, You know, when it comes to drones, it's kind of like, why are you using the drone? Are you going to be taking videos? Are you going to be editing photos? Are you just flying to fly because it's fun and cool? Um, the Mavic 2 Pro is, you know, going to be the best one that I'm going to suggest okay. if you're going to be doing photo, video. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit expensive, but it's definitely worth it. It's so small. I mean, it fits in my carry-on. It's easy. Okay. Um, camera equipment. Gosh, I mean, there's so many cameras out there. Yeah. You just kind of have to find what works for you. People are pretty dedicated to certain brands over other brands so Mm. you know I think that's kind of the coolest part of Instagram I actually bought my camera because I follow a photographer from Portugal and we've been like following each other for years on Instagram and he has amazing photos Mm. and I messaged him like hey I'm thinking of getting a camera what are you shooting with what would you recommend and he Mm. sent me this like huge list this is my favorite camera of all time. And I use this lens for this. Like he sent me a list, you know, this is the best lens for this, 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 this. And I bought that camera. <laughs> yeah. Personally, and that was it. A lot right now, yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
don't be afraid to ask people, you know, if you're following people that have awesome photos, like, Hey man, what are you shooting with? I love your photos. And you create this really cool relationship with people. And I mean, I talked to so many other drone pilots around the world where I'm like, Hey, like I flew the fireworks last night. I messaged so many like drone friends on Instagram and I'm like, Hey, I'm thinking of doing this. I saw that you did this video. What are your recommendations? <laughs> Cause like, I really, really don't want to crash my drone or have it be blown up by a firework. <laughs> so, but you create these cool relationships yeah, with these yeah. people all around the world. So mm -hmm. Just ask around what works for me is not going to work for everybody else. Um, for scuba diving, definitely I use a GoPro. Um, DJI does have an underwater camera that they came out with. So I would like to try that. Um, but I've kind of maxed out my spending Budget. for the last couple of months. <laughs> like I, Might be the same I bought it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of like back into saving mode. I've retreated to there. Um, yeah. Like I bought so much stuff. I got a new lens. I got the drone course. I got a new tripod. Like I just lots like, okay, of things are like happening. We, we need to back off on spending for a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, but yes, yes. yeah, just search around. There's a lot of really good stuff out there. Okay, I think there's like like right now we are end to of this podcast and i'm sure my subscriber would be very much happy to know ashley and ashley's journey so far and if you love ashley's interview you can follow her on social media i will share the all yes, the links yes please do yeah yeah i will share all the links in the description below as well and uh, thanks everyone for watching this video and uh, right now so it's so signing off okay bye bye take care guys <laughs> Ashley, any Bye. last thoughts you want to share? No, just stay safe and healthy out there. And thanks for like accepting this invite like for podcast series like really quickly. I've just messaged Ashley and she really accepts on the go. So I'm quite yeah. helpful. Okay.